<sighs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the internet. Right here is my old, I say old because we have a new one now, my old helmet. This is a Ruach Atlas 2.0 that I customized by putting a bunch of crap on it, including a bunch of dirt and bug guts because I use it a lot. What we're doing today is we're taking all the parts off of this helmet because it's graduating from an Atlas 2.0 to an Atlas 3.0. Uh, this is the second iteration of the Atlas Venator variant that I make because on the Atlas 1.0 I had most of these parts on it and moved them to this one and now it's time to move on to the new one. Get a little look at this up close because I'm going to be ripping the pieces apart. It is uh, used up, especially these. These just look nasty. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make some comparisons and take my time on this video between this one and the new one so that we can both appreciate some of the differences. Speaking of which, this is my uh, little workstation now and I have this cute white backdrop, but then the Atlas 3.0 came with this cool banner. I was like, well shoot, put that up, that looks cool. I have a nice camera back here, but it is not comfortable to work around it because you'd need to put the camera here and work over and I was like, screw it, I'll just do the head cam. It's really easy for me. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy this. So here's a new one. Here's the Atlas 3.0, which has a few differences. I don't know all of them off the top of my head, but I took the uh, visor off because I never have the visor on while I'm working with it. I put that on last. So some differences are the leather that's used here in the padding. You can see there's a, a what do you call that? A textile foam, I'm not sure what to call it, but versus this goatskin leather. That was one of the first things I noticed, which was really cool. Here on the chin mount too, you can see that same thing happening, goat skin. And then you have this nicer foam material versus, this is the same thing, but then you have this venting fabric here. At least it looks like the same thing. Uh, the shell is virtually the same. I don't know if this shell is a different size because unlike the second generation of Venators where there are two shell sizes, the Atlas 3s have at least three shell sizes. I don't know if there's four, I know there's at least three. Uh, these are large, so they're probably the exact same shell size. I'm curious to see how it's going to feel because I can see this. I don't know if you can, but the padding inside is different as well. Supposedly that was an upgrade, and I'm not doing a review on the helmet today. I'm just showing some differences because I have them both right here. One of the biggest differences that we're going to see later is the visor mechanism. Uh, right now it's a three-piece, so I might as well take this off now. They're quarter screws, quarter turn screws. So you turn these a quarter and they come out or in vice versa. But special note, if you're using an Atlas II, make sure the visor is down when you remove or put those pins in because if you try to do it when it's a different position, it will get stuck instead of it being these five pieces. They did away with those plastic pieces. So anyway, we'll get a closer look at that later, but I guess I'll go ahead and move these out of the way. Another difference is that it comes with a different mounting system for the Shockwave 3. So this is a magnetic plate, which is much better. And then they have the attachments for your Bluetooth system if you want to put it in. So half the work is done for you, but I unfortunately won't be getting much use out of Bluetooth or ear pads because my bike is so loud that I have to wear ear plugs. That, how, do you, how would you describe them? They're plugs that play music and they're Bluetooth, but the point is they are noise canceling. They actually go in my ears and shut out some noise. If I were to use the muffs in here, I wouldn't be able to hear the music because my bike is too loud. So this is arts and crafts. So this is everything I'm going to need to do it. In case you're wondering what these things are, these are about to fall off. This one was about to fall off. That's why I just pulled it off. These are respirators, although they don't actually do anything on the helmet. They're just for, for looks. These are, <laughs> they're parts from, uh, I've mentioned this before in older videos. These are parts from uh, toys I had 15, 20 years ago that I took apart and I painted because they just looked good. They look like they connect. This is a battery pack, which is super useful. I use battery packs on the outsides of my helmets because otherwise you're stuck with just a GoPro battery, which will last an hour at most, depending on what generation it is and how you're using it. So something like this, you can get six to eight hours of battery life. It's a bit of a mess to set up and this is really unsightly, but I'll choose continuous power without a need to stop and take this apart and get the batteries out and replace them. Of course, this is the microphone, which that's the attachment. Inside here, I guess I'll take this out anyway, the chin curtain. Uh, you can kind of see it, but it's spooled up 
behind this piece and the microphone's clipped up right there. So anyway, it's fairly self-explanatory. And then these fins, which are special because they are one of a kind. I have four of them on here and I have four more on a model helmet that is not to be disturbed, which means I basically only have these four. They were made for me by a friend. And um, this fin design, I had to make them for my helmet. They look gross. They're super hot glued on top of being temporarily attached. And the reason for that is because I wanted a way to make sure these didn't fall off, but something that wasn't permanent. But I'll get into that later. So this thing is a mess. When we put this one together, it's going to look so pretty. I don't know if you can hear that country music playing on the radio in the background. I apologize for it. If you like country music, uh, let us know in the comments so that we can make fun of you. Something very useful for work like this or temporary adhesion work is a heat gun. I wonder if this will make my lights flicker. Usually if there's enough power to draw with the heat gun, the lights flicker. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Probably should have gotten a new one of those because this power cable, I've gone through a few per helmet. Uh, whatever one I choose to use, this is the one I choose to use for reasons to connect the battery to the camera. They tend to short after a while and you'll be riding along and your GoPro will just shut off and turn back on. It's because there's a short in the power cable. Um, it hasn't been shorting, but it is almost certainly going to start. When you're making stupid stuff like this, you're, you're always going to end up creating or running into dumb problems, and that's one of the problems I run into personally. Oh, what a mess. That sucks. That's why I hate hot glue, but uh, considering the options I had, I don't regret doing it. So here's my little gripe with hot glue and these fins. These fins were custom made and they're formed to fit on a different helmet. They don't fit on this one precisely where I want them to sit. There's, they connect you know, on the front and back, but there's an arc in the middle where there's space, which means the contact points are really small and it's not very strong. And so over time, if you just bumped one, the adhesive will, you can see the original adhesive pads here. Here's the square here, and then there's a, like a one by two up here. Anyhow, uh, if you bump it, they could fall off fairly easily and I do not want to lose these. Like I mentioned, they're one of a kind. So I thought, well, I don't want to attach things permanently specifically for this reason. In the event that I change to a different helmet or upgrade, I want to be able to take the parts off. So a strong temporary solution was this crappy looking, uh, hot gorilla glue, hot super glue. It's not super glue. It's a strong hot glue. So it worked really, really well. All I had to do was heat it up and rip it off, but now I got all this crap to deal with. This is one reason I hate hot glue. It's really messy. I think I'm going to cheat. I'm going to be a little lazy. Normally, I, I clean each individual part and the helmet I'm removing from, but because it's a problem I can procrastinate, I'm going to leave <laughs> this nasty stuff on my old helmet. <sighs> Look at just how dirty the husk is or the, the base is compared to a new one. I just abuse these helmets, I guess. Ah, it's just nasty. I feel a little bad, but such is the life of a helmet that gets used. First thing you do is you work inside out, because if you were to put everything on the outside and then you're trying to deal with the cable work, then it would be difficult. So, cables first. That's different. So you can't see this, super thin. But this foam liner at the front, this is different. I wonder how that's gonna feel. You can kind of see it here. Here's the foam liner in the front where your nose would go. This liner is thicker and it doesn't have these recessions. So I don't know, I think maybe it's for wind noise. I don't know why that's different, but it is different. But this clip should still work. Come on, Bessie. This is gonna be interesting. This is my least favorite part of messing with any helmet is removing the foam pads inside. I get a little bit of anxiety when I remove them because they can be really hard to put back the way they were. So there was a time when I would run the cables through one of these vents. I would rip the vent assembly out of the helmet. You can't really see it. And then I would remove one of these and I'd run them through here, which was cool except for the fact that, well, several reasons, but one reason I stopped doing it and now I just do underneath the helmet is because, well, there's room now 
at least there wasn't the last one. This chin vent is different. So, okay. Right here, right here. There's a break in the joint in the front vent chin guard right here. So that's a good place for a cable to go through like this. So now you have that fine cable. You can put this back with little to no effect on the camera and or on the cable, I should say. There you go, yeah. And that fits pretty handsome right there. And the camera will be here and then, yeah, so that's fine. Okay, let's see how this is assembled. You got one pop lock here and what's this? Ooh, that's neat. I like that where the, the chin mount, the clip goes in here to a recession. That's cool. I don't know how to describe what it is I, I'm seeing and how it's different, but normally this cheap pad would be a, a, a full loop and then you'd have to pull this straight through. But now because it's more of a C instead of an O, you can just do this. So that's easier to work with at least. I'm not sure why they did that, but I'm not complaining. Okay, I'm gonna temporarily put this back together, but I'm gonna have to take it apart again in a minute to uh, do the power cable. So let's see if that clip's okay. That's a good clipping action. That makes me happy. Now, normally I would have done the camera first and I'd have the camera sitting on here so I can make sure the cables are exactly where they need to be, but I'm actually using that camera on my head. Secondly, the camera uh, adhesion is going to take a day and I didn't want to do that day first and it wouldn't matter because I'm using the camera. So I'm going to guess, which I hate guessing. I'll be off by like an inch if I'm off. And that will mean I'll have to probably go back in here and just pull and adjust the cables. But for the sake of this video, that's what I'm going with. What I should do is cut a small flap in this tab right here. Um, I'm not sure what size that is, a quarter of an inch right here. If I cut that out, which I guess I could do that later, then this would just clip right in, no problem. Yeah. Look at that tab. Look at that tab mechanism. That's much better than last time. Look at this. So you can see it, you can see it clearly right here. Okay, what's going on back here? Oh, a center tab. That's different. If you run cables in your helmet, it's really important to, before you do anything permanent, if ever, to try the helmet on and see if you can feel pressure points on your head anywhere. For example, I'm bunching up probably a couple feet, no, a couple feet. Yeah, about a couple feet of wiring right here, uh, the back of the head. And it's important for you to put it on, rustle your helmet a bit and see if you can feel any contact points or pressure points because that can lead to a headache. It, it sucks, so just be thorough. Anyway, that's about right, about where it's going to be. Now it's time to do the camera and battery fixtures. A little trick if you're taking off a sticker and there's adhesive left over, you can take the sticker and, and dab it and pick up, usually just pick up what's left over like this. Yeah, there's a little bit of adhesive right here, but since I'm gonna put another adhesive on there anyway, I shouldn't worry about it. That's, that came off pretty well. Okay, this is called dual lock tape. Dual lock tape is really cool. It's basically Velcro, but plastic. Here's the battery, here's the dual lock side. And unlike Velcro, which requires two different uh, sides, you know, there's the fuzzy side and then there's the side that looks like this. Both these sides, are, it's just one type. They're like Legos almost. I don't know if you can see the detail in these, but there's a bunch of plastic nubs. And when you press them together, they just click in place and they rip apart like Velcro, but much more efficiently, more strong, and without the gross mess. The dual lock tape is awesome. It's my new favorite temporary adhesive. The thing is, uh, there's not many places I can use it. In fact, on this helmet, this is the only good place to use it. And you'll see why. I don't know why I'm working with the helmet in my lap. I guess it's just what I'm used to. I'm not used to having this much space. This isn't a lot of space, but this is like a designated space for working on this stuff, which is awesome. But I'm used to having less. So I'm used to just doing everything in my lap. You should heat the adhesive and the surface. It doesn't need a lot, but a little bit of heat helps. So here's how it works. Line it up. You don't have to line it up. In fact, it would work without lining it up correctly, but listen to this locking noise. Well, <laughs> that was a sloppy one, but now they're joined really well. I'm holding on just to the battery. And the reason I use dual lock tape is because it adheres and removes quickly and with strengths. And in the case of this battery, you want to take it off to charge it or replace it. So that's why it's useful here. So, I mean, it's just awesome stuff. Super useful. Super, well, now here's the thing about this. I have used my own base plates to try to attach a GoPro 
this one has the same problem that they all have. The cameras are heavy, or they can be heavy, and over time, with the helmet moving around and the camera taking wind and forces, like if you're driving really fast, you look to the right and left, the wind is just putting so much pressure on whatever adhesive you're using that eventually, every time, no matter what I do, temporarily, as far as attaching it, it will fall off and it sucks. So it doesn't matter what kind of plate you use, the forces are too great, the camera's too heavy, whatever. So very regrettably, on something like this, I have to do something permanent. So here's what I did last time. I've done this with Rurox mount, I've done it with my own mounts. They all work, but this is the prettiest because it's actually meant to fit on the helmet. I attach it temporarily with dual-sided dual tape, which fortunately they already have on here. And then I have to use something permanent to attach to make sure it never comes off. Like this is, I don't think I could, yeah, I can't even feel it moving. I can't rip that off. That is a nice piece of mine. Now I hate permanent stuff because I want to be able to reuse what I have. So I can't use this one and put it on here. I have to have a new one ready. Also, depending on how you do it, in case how I do it, that looks unsightly. That is JB Weld, which essentially melts the plastic together, which is a nice, I mean, it works, but that just looks gross. Not as pretty as if you didn't use JB Weld and it just stuck on like that, you know? But that's what I'm forced to do. I don't like doing permanent stuff, but I've tried everything several times and this is just the only way to make it work. I'm gonna attach it temporarily today. I will JB Weld it at the end of the day because that's gonna be messy and then it has to rest for a day to settle. So I'm only gonna temporarily attach it now. This will sit on there just fine, but as soon as you introduce the weight of a camera and then air, it will, any mount on this face will eventually fail. I have even done mounts uh, originally where I used a regular GoPro mount over here and had a complicated arm system to bring it over. I've had an arm here, uh, a plate here on this more flat surface and a complicated arm system bring it around to have the camera where I want it. Same problem, even though you have a better point of contact on the surface, the, the weight and the forces are just so much that eventually it just fails. And it's very frustrating just because I don't like doing permanent stuff. Anyway, I'm just excusing it away for you so you don't think I'm being lazy. I really am not being <laughs> lazy in this instance. Oh, there we go. That's basically exactly what I wanted. That might be just enough. Well, it definitely works better. It's not perfect. I really should cut into that. I don't want to cut into the fabric though. I was okay with cutting into the plastic because it didn't change much. That definitely helped though. This and this. Like this. Corner in and follow that nice line. Cool, okay. Yeah, so there's those. Um, I'm not gonna do the respirators next because they're the hardest parts to put on. Next, I'm gonna do the fins. I already know what kind of cuts I have to make because I've done this several times. So now I'm gonna go through and heat them all and press them on a bit better. Okay, now this is much harder to use your nail to get these and this is where something like this knife will become useful. You get it, you get it right in there, I just got it, and then you got it off. And I'm gonna show you the frustration of trying to get these to work because the arc is not matched to these parts of the helmet. They're not formed for this, uh, not formed for this helmet. Okay, now I take these two points and try to press them on and you can probably see the gap there. Um, this is why I wish I could design actual helmets because this would be just, it would flow, all the lines would flow, but this is kind of what I have. So it's important when you get this on to really press as much as you can and just hold it for a moment so that the, expanding tape with the heat can reach and make more contact. I mean, if ever there's a point to press, it's when you first put it on. And then when the tape spreads and it gets more surface area and cools and retracts, some of it comes back, but most of it, the grip stays and you have a greater 
surface area of contact. So you have to press on. That's enough, right? Just do this. See, it just that looks gross. Sorry. But this is a helmet I actually use. And so I need it to not break. Yeah, I'm trying to use less this time so it's not as gross, but it'll be gross no matter what. See, that's not as bad as last time, but when they dry, they're going to yellow and it's going to look even more gross. But hey, peace of mind. All right, last difficult thing, but also kind of the most important in a way because this is the face of the helmet. I had these respirators ready months ago in preparation for the new Atlas 3.0. Here's what I'm working with here. Here are the old ones. Look how much cleaner they look. Here's the thing though, they're both the same part for the most part. They're respirator filters. You can see the attachments are different. The dimensions are the same except for the, the faces of them. These had faces as well, and you can see this grid underneath. These don't have the same grid underneath. Uh, I tried to take these caps off, but they were just not removable. And the reason I wanted to take them off is because this low profile fits that helmet way better than this fat profile, in my opinion. But this is what I have to work with. And also, if I have to say this, the respirators aren't normally black. They're normally gray. You can see these are chipping and fading. Uh, my brother painted these for me because he's a much better painter than I am. So he also uh, cut the attachments, which were raised, and then sanded it so that it'd be more flush and easier to work with. Now, the reason these are so hard to work with is because look at the surface. It's all over the place. And then this is well, mostly flat, thank goodness, but you got to find points of contact. You have to make it look pretty, and it just doesn't look as good as this because this recession here fits that really well, or you can do this. But with this, it's just not quite as flush. But this paint matches the helmet way better than this one does. So that's sharp looking, at least that matches really well. Anyway, I'm gonna be fiddling with this and trying to find the best way, best position, and then think of the best way. It's probably gonna get mounted the exact same way, probably. Yeah, it makes sense that it would because the the faces are the same. It's probably gonna get mounted the same way. The thing about these is they're so light. In fact, these are lighter than these, are they? Yeah, he was able to haul them out a little bit. So they have a better time staying on the helmet. Those I've never had a problem with, the, with the exception of this one. I just started to fall off at the end of its life. Um, these are temporarily attached with dual-sided tape. And because they're so light, they'll probably be okay. The problem is they're pretty big and they're not very aerodynamic. So. They can take a beating, but at least with the smaller profile ones, they were okay. So I'm gonna just go ahead with that same mounting method for these. So I think it's gonna rest here and push it basically on this seam. So I'm wrapping it here. And I think the center of this is gonna sit right about there. Like that's what I've been looking for. So we'll see if it, well, attaches okay. This middle one seems to be working. No, it's not. It's not working at all. That is, it's, if you can see in there, it's halfway off, which means like half of what I did isn't even doing anything. So that sucks. We're going to do that again. Rematch, redo all this work, man. Wouldn't you like it if, <laughs> wouldn't you like it if you could just buy a Venator that was properly like manufactured and there you go. You get your own Venator helmet. That is lining up much better. If I can just get it to adhere, I think it'll be really good. That looks much better than last time. I mean, it's the same position on the helmet. It's a matter of where the adhesives are that are much better. They look like they're placed much better this time. Yeah, you can really tell it's much better. ka -chow. Yeah, that's a little thick for my taste, but I mean, yeah, that's gonna work good. All right, I'm gonna do the other side. Mm, boop. Now, before I start to stick it on, make sure it looks symmetrical. And we go for it. <sighs> wow, that's thick. <laughs> They're so huge. <laughs> the profile looks good. The backs look good. The front just looks like too much of a bug to me. That's not a criticism of the helmet. That's just how these parts were used or are made. Or... And then I definitely prefer this over a base helmet. 
if I designed the helmet, it would not look quite like that. It'd be close. It'd be more streamlined. But anyway, cool. I gotta get the pin lock in there. So pin lock, if for some reason you're unfamiliar with what that is, is essentially a layer that you put inside your visor for the purpose of trapping air. And that trapped air prevents your visor that you're looking through the portion of it that's being trapped. It prevents it from fogging. So it's an anti-fog layer. Very simple, but it's also very reliable. It's called a pin lock because these grooves will go and hold against that. And you can kind of see, let's make sure I got the right side. This side, there's a thin rubber seal. And when this is pressed against your visor, this rubber seal traps a thin layer of air. So if it gets cold or hot, the air inside is unaffected and it doesn't fog. That's how that works. And it presses in there so tightly because of these two pins. I'm doing it backwards, but that's how it traps air. Before you put this in, get the film away from these grooves because otherwise you're gonna trap the film. So just start the edges like this. There we go, make sure you got the right side. There's the, all right, slip this in. Ooh, that's a good grip, yikes. Try to be careful, I don't wanna smudge it with my finger. All right, here's the scary part. What I do is I bubble this out. You bend this and be careful. You, you, you might be scared about breaking it, but it's okay. Then put this under. I don't know if that made sense. And then slip this in. All oh, the film's coming back. Slip that in. And now check the top and bottom of your seal. So now I'm pushing it down to fit. Pull it out as much as you can. And then you start in and just, it flattens itself. Pull it out, start from the center. Press the seals on your way out. And this film got caught up in here again. Oh, please don't get stuck. Okay, cool. Cool. That was basically it. I'm going to just do it one more time to make sure it's... Ooh, I just felt the air go out because I retracted the visor. Now we're like this. And now we do this. You must be very careful never to lose these. That's the only concern I have is these are free. And if you just drop one, you're kind of screwed unless you can buy more of these. So since there's no mechanism and since they go straight through, kind of like the pin lock, I'm gonna have to pull the corners away first so that the uh, screws can make contact with the visor like it's supposed to. So this is exciting. This is gonna look good. I love when the visor goes on it. Like it's like when it's face just shows up. Well, that's cool. Oh, it's so satisfying. It clicked right on. Okay. One at a time. Quarter turn to the right. Quarter turn to the right. It's done. Okay. Ready to see the visor? Oh, shiny. That looks cool. That looks a little different to me. I'm used to seeing the, the fittings up there, but there it is, man. Clean. Look how look how look how clean it looks now. You know, because my helmet is just so beaten, shiny. Okay, almost done for today. Um, JB Weld, my least favorite thing. For that, you're going to need a painter's plate and a paintbrush and this this nut, basically. Ow, just cut myself. There's a recession. I shouldn't have the visor on for this. There's a recession here where that's supposed to set, but there's nothing holding it in there. And I don't understand why it's not part of it, but that should be sitting in there. The only way to make that stay is to use adhesive. I don't have super glue. So JB Weld will have to do, I'm gonna use a tiny pinch of that. Ow, I keep cutting myself on this table. Okay, JB Weld, this one's a two-part epoxy, which I don't understand this fixture because ironically, it's like the question of why doesn't super glue get hard in the bottle? Well, here, when you have the two parts, that's kind of what happens. If you try to squeeze them out, ooh, I hate the smell. If you try to squeeze them out, why is that coming out first? That's probably enough. Now I'm gonna re retract them, wait for the, wait for it to recede. And then I'm gonna keep pulling them back and hopefully they go away. And try to get this on while it's before I'm running, out of, I'm running out of time. I don't think it's gonna work, man. 
Okay, hopefully. Now I've had it to where <laughs> whatever's left makes contact with each other and solidifies, and then this whole thing goes to waste like a frozen bottle of super glue. So that's done. Anyway, I gotta mix this pointy stick side. Just a tiny, just a tiny bit this time. It's such a small amount. I, I have to make this work. I don't want to use a bunch. Okay, I think it's good, but now I gotta do this. There. Leave that for tomorrow. Okay, now it's time for the actual hard part. Get this out of the way. I'm gonna do this. In the event that some falls, I have something underneath that's disposable, like the plate itself. I'm gonna just take my time like Bob Ross. And already, I think it looks bad, but I mean, it's definitely better than last time. Roll it up. That's too much. But truthfully, it doesn't take much of this stuff to work. I know it doesn't. I wouldn't have thought to use JB Weld, but my friend Chase on Two Wheels used it when he had the same problem I had of trying to get these camera mounts to adhere. He goes, you know what? I give up. I want to use this. And he did it. And it worked so well. I was impressed. I was like, well, it's good to know that if I give up on trying to make these temporary adhesives work, that that'll, that's an option. And that's where I'm at now. I wonder if that's enough. Let's see what I got here. I can definitely do better. It's just tough. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think it's gonna work really good. Way better than that one. I mean, I, I literally was using the back end of a plastic spoon, so it was like as wide as my thumb, so. That's much better. There we go. All right, cool. All right, now very unfortunately, this is gonna have to be it for the video. I can't touch this for another day, but uh, shoot, man, that looks sharp. I'm gonna take a picture of this and upload it tomorrow for Instagram or something. But yeah, man, dude, I can't wait to try it out. I'll be trying that probably tomorrow. Um, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this different video. This is some stuff I do sometimes. This was a chill, quiet one. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you liked it. See you later. I'm leaving all this stuff.